Dad is a fine young man, someone I really looked up to growing up. He's um, ambitious, confident, very bold, and um, fearless. He's one who loved his family dearly. My father was someone who stood for justice, equity, and fairness. I can't remember any situation where he cheated someone out of their rightful rewards or out of their rightful um, um, things that belong to them. No matter what decisions we made, even the ones that didn't make any sense to him, he always supported. Stay is kind hearted, down to earth, strong will, mm, committed, family oriented. He's a loving man, he's so caring and he's very entertaining. My dad enjoyed life, he enjoyed the finer things of life. He told really great stories. He would always want to know what's happening in your life and always give you advice. So he's someone that, you know, you could say anything to and he would always encourage us. And he was our parallel parliament president. He was a member of the Anglican Church and he was a member of Father's Union. And on several occasions, he attended Synod. And that's a testament to a, a person who saw life as not just living, but living in a godly way. My dad knew the Bible more than all of us in the house, and he was always able to tell us stories from the Bible, always able to explain the backstories to some of the events in the Bible. The little memory I have about my grandpa, he, when I visit him, he takes me out. He brought me tears. We had so many best moments, especially when we sit at our parlor parliament. More like a place where everybody gets to talk about everything, religion, politics, family, history, and everything. One of the fondest memories I have of him is arguing with him every Sunday. The discussion usually starts cool and then we jump into an argument and I usually end up crying just to win the argument. Sometimes he would almost have to give everything he has for us to go back to school. Those are moments that, um, you know, I'll always cherish in my life. He also had a way of always coming back home early and um, having time with us. My fondest memory of my dad and the one that inspired me the most has to be um, when I was about to go to school for the first time and he called me into the living room and um, gave me a lot of advice that shaped me and um, made me scale through school. Um, but one of the things he said to me that day that I would never forget in my life that inspired me so much was when he said to me, Gary, um, I'm giving you this money. Um, make sure you spend it judiciously. And that was the first time I heard the word judiciously. And I told myself that being that I will learn one big word every day and make sure I know the meaning of those words. One of the memories I had about Daddy is one of the earliest that I had about him and that sets the foundation for the kind of person that I will become in life. I had gone out and spent some time outside and I came back late to the house. When I came back, daddy was already waiting for me and immediately it gave me a discipline that I would never forget and it's that discipline that has actually led me through my life and people have come to acknowledge that particular trait in me as a result of daddy's correction. That memory stands out for me. That wasn't really a religious man per se. Um, his philosophy in life is just do good as much as you can, treat people good, treat people right. That was his philosophy in life. He didn't joke with education at all. He um, encouraged his children, his uh, nephews, his nieces, 
and anybody who he could um, extend that um, um, help towards um, achieving their educational dreams. It stood for justice, stood for unity. He stood for strength of the family. He looked, you know, beyond his um, immediate family. That's his first degree relation. And even went, you know, on to build strength in his extended family. Dad did not have a lot of friends, but the very few friends he had, he remained loyal to. He was always there for them when they needed him, always supportive of them. And um, that, that is one of the things I learned from my dad and I continue to practice to this day. He's someone who would put the benefit of others above his own, even to his own detriment. He cared for his family deeply, he loved every member of his family and he wished the good and prosperity of every member of his family. He would push you but that push was to get you into a favorable position in life. Dad loved everybody and he would always carry everyone along. Whether it is a business opportunity, a political opportunity, my dad was always wanting everyone around him to succeed. That is a man who loves talk about football, so I remember we were watching football nations cup together and world cup together. So many stories. Night, I found out that he had passed was like the most terrible night ever. I was in shock for some hours before it actually dawned on me. I was in shock. One of my most dreaded, the most dreaded moments I thought of in my life. I saw it coming, I wouldn't say I didn't see it coming. Um, at some point last year, we, I took the kids to see, my kids to see him, to spend the Christmas with him and um, we were supposed to have pictures together but he said, um, uh, do you think I'll die soon, <laughs> you know? Uh, the kids, uh, he said, no, 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 he doesn't want pictures. Eventually, he agreed, but we couldn't take the pictures. I saw that the illness, he had a CVA like a year ago. For more than a year to his demise, I saw that I was eating him up. And we tried to support him as much as we can, physiotherapy. But, you know, the last time I saw him was in March. He died in April. And that day I came, I, I already knew that things weren't going well. But it still came to me as a shock. How I wished that, you know, he could still stay alive. My dad was very young, he died at a very young age. Didn't really, you know, enjoy most of the things that he worked for. Even though as his children, we tried to make him have a good life during the time that he couldn't do much. But I wouldn't say my dad has really, was, had really gotten enough of what he would have gotten from us. So it came to me as a very rude shock. In fact, I'm still in denial. I can't even, sometimes I tell people that my dad is, I, I, sometimes I pick up my phone and I still want to call him. By all means, if I could talk to my dad one more time, it would be to tell him from the depths of my heart, from the very bottom of my heart, of how much I love him and of how much I appreciated the sacrifices that he made for us. The selflessness, the pains. I wish I could communicate that to him. All through this period, all I could think of was, did my love reach him? Did he realize that I loved him as a father and that I had no regret having him as a father? If I could give everything I have, I would give it for him to come back. If there is one thing that I desire the most, it would have been for him to have lived and enjoyed the fruit of his labor. Daddy, thank you for all you did for us. Thank you for the sacrifices. Thank you for the love. Thank you for molding me into the woman I am today. Thank you for the impact in my life and 
you know, like I call you I'm Bruce Lee. I love you and if there were to be another life, I would still want you as my dad. I love you, dad. Um, even though we weren't a family who often said that to each other or even said that at all, I love you from the very depths of my heart. And I want to thank you for being a good dad, for all you did for us as a family and for me personally. Uh, thank you so much, Dad. Um, thank you for showing us the right way in life and for helping us to prioritize the most important things in life. Thank you so much, oh. I miss you so much. I wish I could still call you to talk about all our political ambitions and everything. I really miss you. I miss the determination that you always put in us. I miss the fact that um, we won't get to see you again. We won't get to sit with you in the sitting room to discuss a lot again. I really miss you. And um, you know that you have left a very huge vacuum in our lives. You have, not just amongst us, but amongst your nieces, your nephews, people that you stood for, even when they were not able to fight. They'll really miss you. I wish I could, I wish I had the opportunity to um, talk with you before your demise. Mm. My dad was here right now. The only words I can actually say to him is I love you. And thank you for all you did for me. I didn't get to tell him how much I appreciated him. So I think like, those are the only things I would say to him if he was here. A lot of family and friends have shown great support to us during this period. I am eternally grateful for all their support. I will never forget it. You've supported me one way or the other. You've called, test checked on me to see I was okay mentally. Huge thank you to everybody who has supported us financially, emotionally and physically. And I know it's not been easy with the pandemic and everything going on right now, but people really showed out. People really showed us love. People really came through for us and say thank you to everyone. I wish you all Johnny Mercy back to your home. All those who have gathered here in Udovia today to honor us. I say thank you and I pray that God will continue to honor you and grant you safe trip back to your various destination. And um, we say thank you and we pray that Almighty God blesses you and your family beyond your expectations. Thank you so much. Papa, he calls me to pray. He tells the Lord. Oh, 
Papa says if you lose your way, you can pray. Don't be afraid, don't lose faith. You will find your help, there'll be a way. Just remember to pray. Find more strength and grace And may the good Lord keep him longer In Jesus' name